In this lesson, we're going to move on with the outline of criminal law by looking at the various elements of an offense. As we discussed earlier, there are many different crimes that can be committed and various places in which they are defined, either in statute or in common law. However, irrespective of what crime may be committed and where the definition lies, two main elements have to be fulfilled. On the one hand, you must fulfill the actus reus or the external element, the actual physical act itself of the crime. And you must also, conversely, have the mens rea or the internal element or the mental intent to do such an act. Now, once again, the burden of proof is on the prosecution, except for instances where there's a defense of insanity, which we will look at later on as we progress. First of all, let's look at the actus reus or the external physical element. Firstly, both the actus reus and the mens rea have to occur at the same time, as in the person must intend the crime and do it concurrently. What the actus reus actually covers is the act or the omission, the circumstance surrounding it, as well as the consequence. What do I mean by this? What we can consider as an act, for instance, is committing murder, the unlawful killing of a human being. An omission, on the other hand, may be, for example, the failure to send a tax return. Now, you might consider the two examples that I mentioned being wholly different and poles apart, but just to illustrate the difference between an act and an omission, I mentioned those. But we will discuss omission later on as well. Circumstance is, for instance, the component of property being of another person in relation to theft, the definition of which we will look at in a little while. The consequence aspect is also covered by actus reus, as in murder or the death itself. Now it's mentioned here that a conviction cannot be made unless both the actus reus and the mens rea elements are established and proved. There is a qualification for this in relation to strict liability offenses, which for instance could be selling of adulterated food, where intent is not necessary just by virtue of statute and regulation itself, it's considered a strict liability offense of which, if committed, and only the actus reus element is present, you can be found guilty. The best way to illustrate how the actus reus fits into the definition of the crime itself, let's look at the definition of theft as per section 1, subsection 1 of Theft Act of 1968. Now, theft is defined as dishonestly appropriating property belonging to another with the intention of permanently depriving the other of it. Now, this is a good example to distinguish and to demarcate the actus reus and the mens rea components. The appropriation of property belonging to another is the actus reus, the physical act itself. Whereas the intention of permanently depriving the other of it is the intent or the mental aspect, the mens rea. It is important to note that where a crime is not a strict liability offense, both the actus reus and the mens rea elements have to coincide as well as be present. What's important to take from this particular lesson is the fact that there are offenses which can be committed without a mens rea, without a mental element. But the converse of that cannot be said. As in, without an actus reus, without the act itself, an offense proper cannot be committed. What I mean by this is, for instance, when you have an actus reus and a mens rea, you can convict a person. When there's an actus reus and no mens rea, you can still convict a person. Why? Because there are strict liability crimes, like selling adulterated food. However, where there is no actus reus and only a mens rea, as in an intent alone, you cannot convict. Now, later on in this introduction and this summary, we will look at incohate offenses or attempts where things which are more than merely preparatory have been done, but the act itself, the actus reus proper, has not been committed. And yet, there is intent, and we can assume that the person has gone 80% towards actually acting on it. There are convictions based on that as well, but for the crime proper, you cannot convict a person without an actus reus being present. We have defined actus reus as an act or an omission. Now, an actus reus can be committed by doing something which results in a certain consequence, or it could be committed voluntarily, concurrently, as, as in without a particular result, but 
as a conduct itself what do i mean by this you can define crimes as either result crimes or conduct crimes now as the names themselves suggest conduct crimes mean that your conduct itself would mean that a crime is committed for instance perjury in court conversely a result crime is one where the result has to happen in order for the crime to have been committed a very simple example of which is murder the person has to die in order for you to be accused of murder and to be convicted later on of it so to recap we outlined the difference between the actus reus and the mens rea with emphasis on the actus reus element itself and how it plays a key role in determining the act or the omission the circumstance and the consequence we looked at a few key facts in relation to how the actus reus is a vital component in any crime and that where it is not present you cannot establish a crime and the demarcation and the distinction based on the theft act section 11 or the definition of it now in the next lesson we are going to look at an exciting area in relation to actus reus itself called automatism which is also used as a defense hi my name is shavin bandar naik thanks a lot for watching this video on youtube for the complete course make sure you click the link on the left Also for an exclusive discount to YouTube viewers enter the coupon code youtube at the course page all the very best with your studies and good luck with your exams see you in the next lesson